the sizzle of McDonald's sausage. It's enough to make you crave your favorite breakfasts. Enough to head over to McDonald's. Enough to make you really wish this commercial were scratch and sniff. And if you're a sausage person, now get two satisfyingly savory sausage McGriddles, sausage biscuits, or sausage burritos for just $3.33. Or mix and match. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. At the UPS Store, we know things can get busy this upcoming holiday. You can count on us to be open and ready to help with any packing and shipping or anything else you might need. Is there anything you can't do? Um, actually, I don't have a good singing voice. <clears throat> the UPS... Nope. But our certified packing experts can pack and ship just about anything. At least that's good. Your local, the everything you need to be unstoppable store. The UPS store. Be unstoppable. The UPS store locations are independently owned. Product services, pricing, and hours may vary. See center for details. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. If you're looking for an easy, safe, efficient way to reduce, here it is. The Horlick Weight Reducing Plan. This plan has been tested, tried, and approved by literally thousands of once overweight women. In a recent test in Chicago, for instance, Women lost on an average more than three and a half pounds each in only three weeks. Here's what the plan is. Every noon, in place of a heavy, hard-to-digest lunch, you simply mix yourself a good glass full of Horlicks malted milk, hot or cold, whichever you prefer. That's all there is to the plan. And how ideal it is for hot weather. Nourishing, sustaining, easy to digest, Horlicks is just the thing for a hot weather lunch for keeping you fit and alert. Start the plan right away. Keep track of your weight and see if it isn't just as effective as I say. You can get Horlicks malted milk, you know, at your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. When Squire Skimp learned that Lum and Abner had announced the grand opening of their new picture show for Saturday night, he immediately started advertising that his show, Skimp's Hippodrome, would open Friday night. Now, Lum and Abner have gone him one better by announcing a preview, an advance showing of their picture for Friday afternoon, thereby gaining the distinction of opening the first picture show in Pine Ridge. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner, with paintbrush in hand, decorating the front of the new theater. Lum is just approaching. Listen. Uh, did you make an announcement, Long? Yeah, I made two of them. That's why it's taken me so long. Well? Uh, Widder Abernathy come over there and wanted to buy some groceries, and I had to stop and wait on her, so I just decided to make another announcement while I was there. Uh-huh. I invited all the children, told them they could get in for nothing. Well, good, good. How are you getting along with the painting? Why, all right, I reckon. I've been working ever since you left. Wait a minute. What are you doing there? Why? I'm just uh, painting a box office like you told me to. Well, I never told you to paint the glass, too, though. You told me to paint the whole business. I asked you just before you left if you wanted the whole thing painted, and you said yes. Well, I never meant for you to paint the windows, too, though. What do you think I put that glass in there for if we was going to paint over it? Well, that's just what I've been wondering. If we was going to paint over it, we may as well use boards. Then a heap cheaper. Why, sure. I don't know what you were thinking about, Mom. Well, we've got to have the glass for me to look through, Abner. How am I going to see the customers when they come up to the window there? Well, I, I thought that's what you had that little hole cut in the glass for. That's to talk through. Well, you can see through it, too. Come in here. I'll just show you. I know you can see through it. 
You can't see enough to tell who it is buying the tickets, though. Well, what do you care who it is a buying them? If as long as they shove the money through there. Well, I'd love to be able to speak to folks when they come up to buy a ticket. Well, they can hear you through that hole. Yeah, they can hear me, but I want to know who I'm a talking to. Well, why don't you ask them in? Yeah, that'd sound fine. That would be fine. Somebody come up there and stick a quarter through that hole, and I'd say, who are you? And they'd say, John Smith. And I'd say, good evening, John. You mean old John Smith that lives over there on the old Dilly Honey place? Why, he wouldn't give a quarter to see nothing, now. Why, of course not. Well, how's he going to get in the show, then? You ain't going to let him in for nothing, are you? Why, no, I just said John Smith. It could be somebody else just as easy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You can't see very good through that glass, can you? It, it might have been Charlie Withers. Now, them two looks enough alike to be own brother. No, it wasn't Charlie Withers. Why? Let's see. Who could it have been? It weren't nobody. I just well, said Well, how'd that done. quarter get in there, then? What quarter? Why, the one you said Oh, was for stuck... goodness sake, Abner. What's the matter with you anyway, Abner? What's the matter with me? Yeah, what's wrong with you? Well, I don't know. Um, Doc Miller says it's a rheumatism, but I, I believe it's my eyes. They ain't been right since we bought them spectacles. Mm. You know, all our family, as far back as I can... Well, do don't that. start that, Abner. I ain't got time to stand here and listen to all your ailments. We've got to get this show ready to open by tomorrow afternoon. Did a helping, you're a hindrance. The idea's of painting all that glass over there. Keep me busy undoing what all you did. May as well break the glass out as to have it that way. What did you do that for? Well, it, you said that I may as well break it out of there. Well, are you crazy? Did I never make... Just get out. Give me that paintbrush. Now get out of here before I lose my patience. Well, I need to get out of here. What? Everything's going wrong. You jump on me over here and Elizabeth ball me out before I left the place this morning just for knocking a picture of sorghum off the table. I never knowed where my elbow was at. Or, well, I knowed, but I forgot about him. Well, don't start that now, Abner. Just forget about it. It's all right. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Reckon I flew off the handle. I can't stand that whimper, and I know that. Well, it just looks like everything I try to do is wrong. Well, that's all right now, Abner. We can put a new glass in there and take some turpentine and clean the paint off the rest of it. Just let it go. It's all right. Uh, you, you want me to get a rag and some turpentine and, and start taking it off? No, no, never mind. I'll tend to it myself. Uh, uh, well, uh, what do you want me to be doing? Well, uh... First thing I'd do if I was you, I'd quit leaning against that wet paint there. Oh, my goodness, Mark. Now, Elizabeth, will throw a transom short uh, Just me. sit down over there for a few minutes, Abner. Look sort of that. calm yourself down. You're getting jumpy. Huh? Nothing I'd... Wait a minute. Here comes Dick Huddleston now, oh. for goodness sake. Uh, uh, um, no, don't tell him how come that glass broke out of there. No, I won't say nothing. Well, howdy, Dick. Well, howdy. I've got some good news for you. Some good news? Yeah, yeah I'll get that. Here. Well, what's the matter here? Did you have an accident? Yeah, we, uh, well, we accidentally run our paint brakes through that window there. Well, what are you doing painting the windows for anyway, Lon? Oh, we, uh... Well, well uh, uh, we can get that off, Dick. Uh, see, we're just going to take some, uh, some turpentine and, and a rag and you then just... You say you've got some good news for us, Dick? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cedric was down at the store a while ago, and he was telling me that Squire Skimp's over there just throwing one fit after another. <laughs> throwing fits? Yeah. Well, what's the matter with him? Why, he's mad because you fellas are going to beat him opening up your show. Oh, yeah, well, fine. Yeah, I'm proud he's throwing them there. <laughs> yeah, I am. The film that he's going to use uh, won't get in here till Friday afternoon late. So he won't have a chance to beat you to the opening. Your preview will be over for that time. Well, good for him. I mean, good for us. Or good. I <laughs> told you this is one time we got the best of him. I figured sure he'd study up some way to beat us to the opening. <laughs> well, I reckon Squire's fine out by now that he's up again a couple of fellas. It's just a little smarter than he is. While we're in Pine Ridge, let's look in on Squire Skimp's Hippodrome for just a moment and see what the competitive house is doing. We find Squire and Grandpappy Spears in Squire's office. Listen. 
Well, it just looks like Mom and Abner got the best of me this time. Yeah, uh, what do you mean got the best of me, Grand Well, it just looks like they're going to get that show of theirs opened up first and try all you can do. Well, I don't know about that. I've got another little stunt in mind and it might change the looks of things a little bit. Uh, I want to ask you, too, uh, uh, what is this uh, woman's organization here, this uh, Civic Improvement Club they've got here? You mean the uh, Ladies Auxiliary? Uh, no, no, that ain't the name of oh, it. Oh, the Ladies Uplift League. Yes, yes, that's the one there. Uh, uh, who is the president of that now? Why, uh, Sister Simpson, I think, Squire. I know Charity belongs to yes, it. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, what is uh, Sister Simpson's telephone ring? Uh, it's a short and a long and a short, I believe it is. Don't matter, though. She answers the phone every time it rings, regardless of who you ring anyway. Yeah, well, uh, I want to talk to her about a little matter. I believe she can help me. Now, don't tell her nothing you don't want everybody in town to know. Now, she's the worst hand in the yeah, world. Wait, just a minute, just a minute. Uh, hello? Uh, Mrs. Simpson? Why, this is M.K. Skimp talking. What? Uh, yes, Mom. Uh, I understand that you're the president and the head of the Ladies Uplift League. Mm hmm. Well, I, I just wanted to call and commend you on the wonderful work that you and your organization are doing for our little city. Uh, yes, I know that. Yes, I've heard about that, too. Heard about what? And I'm glad to know that you ladies are taking such an active and profound interest in our young people. Yeah. Yes, Mrs. Simpson, we should all remember that the youth of today are the citizens of tomorrow. Huh? Oh, yes, we must protect them against their own kind of environment and see that they're given the right type of entertainment. Well, I'm glad that you agree with me on that point, because uh, I'm a calling you on a little matter today that uh, I hesitate to mention. But something we should all be concerned with. I uh, wouldn't want my name brought into it, but I feel it's my duty as a citizen of Pine Ridge to tell you that Mr. Edwards and Mr. Peabody are opening up a new picture show in the old cotton warehouse over there. I know. You ought to know about that. Well, yes, I suppose you had. Uh, they're planning on putting on a matinee tomorrow afternoon, especially for the children of our little city. Now, I happen to know that the picture that they plan to use is one that I most certainly wouldn't want a boy or girl of mine to see. Well, uh, it's what's known in the theater, Mrs. Simpson, as a western. Yes, a western. It uh, has a lot of shooting and outlaws all through it. It's a picture that might influence the future of some of our young people. It's my opinion that the child of today should not be educated in the use of firearms. Well, if I was head of your wonderful organization, I'd see that a picture of that kind was never shown in our city. And you ladies have the power to prevent it. Well, <laughs> well, that's fine. Yes, I'm glad you feel that way about it. <laughs> and I trust that you'll be kind enough not to bring my name into the matter in any way. Well, Lum and Abner may be in for a big disappointment tomorrow. Just a minute, all you boys and girls listening in tonight. I just want to remind you about those swell Horlicks malted milk tablets. Let me tell you, they taste just as good as any candy you ever ate, and that's a fact. But even more important, Horlicks tablets are a great help to a fellow when he's out of doors, roller skating, running, playing games. Just carry them in your pocket. And then, when you're getting a bit tired, eat a couple of tablets. You'll feel peppier right away. Lots of athletes and aviators use these very same Horlicks tablets to build quick energy, to keep them on the go. So how about it? Do you want some of these quick energy Horlicks malted milk tablets? Then ask your mother to get some at the drugstore. They cost only 10 cents for a whole big flask in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.